All right, today's date is uh, October the 15th, uh, 2015. The time is 9.31 a.m. Uh, this is Art Brown of the State Attorney's Office. Uh, we are present at the Manatee County Courthouse with William Cumber, uh, represented by counsel Franklin Roberts, uh, pursuant to the plea that Mr. Cumber has just entered in case number 2012 CF 3529. Mr. Cumber has agreed to give us a statement concerning the death of Sabine Musil Bueller and give us information concerning the location of her body. Um, Mr. Cumber, would you raise your right hand as best you can? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes. Um, and for the record, would you state your name, sir? William Cumber. Okay. And your date of birth? 12269. Now, uh, Mr. Cumber, you have previously said that on the evening of November the 4th, 2008, you were watching uh, election returns with Sabine. Is, is that true? That part ain't true. Okay. All right. Uh, That's, they, it's, it's, I was watching the elections okay. in the bedroom. She was watching some other type of show out in the living room. Okay, all right. That's the truth. All right. Uh, so, I'm sorry, you were in the bedroom? Yes, sir. And she was, was she on the couch? She was in a, on the couch in the living room. Okay. Uh, and you have previously, let me ask you, um, uh, had you had anything to drink that night? A little bit, yes. Uh, what did you have to drink? Uh, beer, wine? Beer. Beer? beer. Okay. And about how much would you say you'd had to drink that night? Uh, Probably about six, eight beers. Okay. Had uh, Sabine had anything to drink? She was consuming out of a bottle of wine. Okay. And uh, did you uh, ingest any drugs that night? No. Okay. Had you been using any drugs in the period leading up to November 4th, 2008? No, sir. Okay. Um, Now, uh, you previously said that at some point you stepped outside to have a cigarette. Is that true? Yes, I did. And did Sabine find you or discover you smoking a cigarette, as you previously said? Yeah, I was walking in. She was, I I don't know where she was going to the bedroom or whatever, but she encountered me and she smelled the smoke. We kind of like got in a little dispute about it. Then she went back into the living room. Okay. And at this time she had just her underwear and a bra on. Okay. Okay. And when she walked back, into the living room. I hadn't. I didn't follow her. I went back into the bedroom, and then I decided, you know, that uh, I needed to talk to her a little bit about it a little bit more because I was stressed. So I walked into about the, the living smoking. Room. About the smoking. Yeah. Okay. So I walked back into the living room. She's getting dressed. She's just well. She had already put her pants on. She had her top on. She was doing her shoes. Mm-hmm. And um, she said that she couldn't do with this relationship anymore because of certain issues and stuff so okay so she said she's going to end the relationship pretty uh, yeah she said that it was getting stressful now you i one issue i assume was the smoking yes and what were the other issues she, that well uh, it was said that um you know i get kind of antsy or stuff like that when i'm drinking mm-hmm. and she couldn't i i don't know if she blamed what happened um, you know the extent of what was going on based on my drinking because I'm not a I'm really not a violent person when I drink I'm kind of smooth and relaxed and everything but there was a lot of stress going on in our relationship okay all right well you say you don't know if she blamed what was going on on the drinking what what are you referring to when you say what was going on the smoking oh the smoking yeah okay all right um, so Sabine's getting dressed and she's saying she can't go on with this anymore what happens at that point? I lose control. I, I hit her in the head. Okay. With, uh, with, with my, your hand with or my, with an object with, or what? With my fist. No, with my fist. And Right hand or left hand? It was the left first, and then I hit with right, and then I don't know. It's, it's, just, it's a disgusting situation, man. Um, I, I, and then she, let, me, let me just stop you there, Mr. Cumber, and ask you... Um, just give me a rough idea how many times you hit her. Two. 
Just two times. Just two times. Did you pick up any items and strike with any like sharp items or anything like that? No. Um, where did you hit her on her body? Uh, forehead. And I don't know where I made contact on the face. I don't know. Okay. Did she bleed from those? Where, where, was she sitting on the couch when you hit her? Yes. Did she bleed from those injuries? I noticed that she was bleeding from the, in, the, the blow to the forehead. I couldn't. I didn't notice the face. Okay. Did she appear to lose consciousness? Not that point, no. Okay. So you've struck her twice, and uh, uh, and you say she hasn't lost consciousness. What's her reaction to being struck? She gets scared, and she covers her face with her hands. Okay. And what what ha- what do you do at that point? I, I reached and grabbed her throat and started choking her. I don't. Okay. And. Uh, did uh, how long how long would you say you were choking her? Like a minute, uh, more? What would you say? Until she wasn't moving. Okay. Um, and was she? Did she struggle with you? Did she try to scratch you? No resistance. Okay. Um, did you become injured during this episode? No. Okay. Your blood was identified in front of the couch. Do you know how that got there? I had an injury on my hand. That's the only way I can explain it. Okay. Did that injury occur after the point at which you you choked uh, Sabine? Or before? No, before. Okay. Was that that night or sometime before that day? Before that day. Okay. It's Uh, being said that I said I fell off the trolley or fell off my bike. That's not the situation. I fell walking on the beach and landed on some rocks. Okay. That's 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 the truth about that. I now, did fall on my bike though and hurt my shoulder. Now, as when Sabine's saying that she's going to end the relationship, does she say anything about ending whatever financial support she's giving you? Like we uh, were we we had mutual financial support. Okay. Okay. When when my business got started, there was a, my, all my funds were expended. Mm-hmm. Okay, and she did start trying to support me because I didn't have any funds yet coming in for my business. Mm-hmm. So uh, there wasn't really, a, there was at the at the end of the relationship she had started, you know, supplying my needs and stuff. But who's paying the rent on two hundred eight B? It was we paid it for a little while. I think she paid one month. Okay, I, I don't. She was supposed to take the money that I was sending to her from the St. Pete Work Release Center mm-hmm. and get an apartment that's and uh, like for instance your dental appointment that afternoon I assume Sabine paid for that uh, we had a, was supposed to pay for it well it we had a, a setup and through a company that's you pay they, they pay the bill mm-hmm. but you pay them a certain amount back you know like a percentage like an interest okay okay but I'm not sure if she paid it that day or if we use my what we had you know gotten through uh, she found it. You know, she's the one who put it all into effect and everything. No. During the time that you struck Sabine and then choked her, was she on the couch the entire time? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, you said you struck her in the forehead and the facial area. The facial area. Okay. Where it hit. Did you see like was she bleeding from her mouth or nose or what? I, I think I recall, you know, a little blood on the face. Yeah, but it wasn't no, if you, it was no gushing. There was no, anything like that. It was just, just little driplets. Have you? Has your attorney shown you uh, photos or gone over with you the location on the couch from where uh, blood was identified? I have seen him. Okay. Is that the area Sabine was when when yeah, this was going on? That was her side of the okay. couch. Um. <clears throat> Uh, so at the end of your choking her, uh, is she like partly on the couch and partly off, like her feet on the floor or what? It started out on the couch and then it's ended up on the floor. Okay.
Once uh, she was no longer showing any signs of life, what did you do at that point? I just I couldn't believe what I did. I stared, I stared down at her, and all things, all kinds of things were running through my mind. I couldn't believe what I had done, you know. And then I, I let me ask you, Mr. Kimber, about what time of night do you think this was? This was around ten thirty, eleven o'clock. Okay. Uh, and uh, now, at that point, did you have any neighbors in your building? Uh, no. Okay. The people even across the uh, family across this across the little area, you know, ground area moved out too. Was there anybody? If we look at uh, this, is a uh, aerial photo, and here would be your building, and here's the other building you're talking about. Was there anybody living in either building? There was nobody in this building at all. There was only somebody when we moved in. There was somebody here. Okay, you're talking about the other building. You're pointing to the other yeah, building. Across the way. Okay. Yeah, across from us. Mm -hmm. the, there was a family over here, and Rebecca Preston lived up in the front. But she had already moved out she, by that she time, had She moved out first. Okay. And then this family moved out. So at the time, on November 4th, was there anybody living in either building? Yes. There was, a, I believe, the, the, the couple, the family that lived right there was still there. Now, where had Sabine parked her car that night? Uh, kind of like where that car is right there. Okay. All right. So that would be like, um, I guess, on the side of the building uh, by the uh, Road Magnolia Avenue. Yes, correct. Okay. And I've seen, like, there's some parking spaces out there. Um, so uh, you've indicated you're looking down uh, at her, and uh, what do you do at that point? I don't know. I thought that I decided I didn't want to go back to prison. Okay. You know, so I thought of a way to expose her. All right. I mean, it's a harsh way to put it, but, you know. The, okay. Uh, what did what you what did you do from there? I went and got um a sheet off the bed. Okay. I rolled her up in it. Um. Now, uh, did you you eventually take her out to the car? Yes. Okay. How long did you wait? You, if this happened about ten thirty, how long did you wait to take her out to the car? I really can't say. Probably about an hour. Okay. So that. roughly, say, 11.30, midnight, something like yes, that? Yes, yes. Did you, uh, when you were, when you struck her and she bled, did you get any blood, any of her blood on yourself or on your clothing? No. no. Um, when you're, did you carry her out to where her car was parked, that you, where you previously indicated? Yes. Okay. Now, I assume you would have gone out some point and checked to make sure nobody's out on the street or something first. Oh, yeah, I did do that, yeah. Okay. So, what did you do? You go out, look both ways, up and down the street, up and down Magnolia Avenue? Just and did a quick scan. Okay. And didn't see anybody walking around, moving around? That's correct. Okay. Um, and did you drag her or throw her over your shoulder or what? I drug her. Okay. And put her in the back seat? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, was she, uh, could you see whether blood was coming through the sheet onto the, the car? Not that given moment. Okay. Um, and where had she left her purse inside the apartment? It was on the table. All right. So you, I assume you grabbed that and the keys, were the car keys inside the purse? Yeah. Okay. Um, before that night, had you ever driven her car? No. She, it's been said she was very particular about whom she let drive her car. Uh, and was that is that true? That's true. Okay. Um, so, where do you go with her at that point in the car? Uh, Can we um, take uh, just a second? It sounds like we're now moving into location. Okay. And so we have two conditions 
of his plea agreement for the downward departure, one being a statement of the facts surrounding her death. I just want to make sure that we've exhausted all the questions you have of him concerning the events surrounding her death before we move on to where, where the body is. Well, as I indicated to you, I, I certainly intend to get into that, but then I also want to get in a little bit to the uh, depositing of the car on 14th Street, you know. Sure. That's sure, the last. Sure. But, and, and obviously if a question pops up while we're talking about the uh, location of the body that refers back to the actual event, I may, that's one fine. of us may ask it. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. I just want to make sure that, we're, that just because the way the plea agreement is arranged, there's two components here, and I want to make sure that we're... Okay. Well, let me just ask the uh, officers, uh, at, up to this point where we're, <coughs> Mr. Cumber has placed the body in the car, uh, additional questions? I do. Was there anybody at Bill, Bill? Was there anybody at your house that night that may have left before this happened, or was it just you and her? Just me and her. The whole night. The whole night. And um, I seem to recall there was like a broken bottle or some glass found. Um, you didn't hit her with any objects at all. No, the uh, detective Kenny said that, and this is what he said. He said there was a a, a wine glass. Yes. That was broken. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when I reviewed uh, the, this is the truth. When I reviewed the pictures. When they, when the Carolyn brought them up to me of the mm -hmm. house and everything, there was still that wine glass sitting on the table, and the wine bottle. And the wine bottle. And the wine bottle. I can't recall anything being broken. Okay. That's the only things that were sitting on the table at close vicinity. Okay. That would have been broken if something that got. Uh, and that was her wine glass and her wine bottle. Yes. That she was drinking that night. Yes, but the funny thing about that is I don't understand my, <laughs> only my DNA is on the bottle. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, that's I. That's I saw I, that. I don't understand that. What uh, was the table that you're talking about? Was it right in front of the couch? Uh, here's the couch. Here's where she sits. It's, it's right off to the left, just a little like northwest of the couch. Mm -hmm. Jumping forward a little bit, after you eventually got back to the, and. To the apartment. Did you do any cleaning up? Move any furniture around? Do anything? I I surveyed the area. Um, Did you see the, blood on the couch? It kind of looked like on the arm to me, so I kind of tried to like clean it up a little bit. Did you use any cleaning products, or what did you uh, use? No, I just used soap and water. Okay. Because when we went to your apartment, there was a pretty significant or strong smell of. I mopped the floor. Before you moved out, yeah, you mopped it with bleach. I'm a I'm a stickler for clean floors. Yeah. it was very clean, but it was this overwhelming smell of bleach. I don't think we had I had any pine salt, so I probably ended up using bleach. Was that because you thought there might be some evidence on the floor? Or no, what? sir. No, okay. sir. I didn't even see my. No, sir. Okay. So, anything else relating to the uh, death of Sabine? Nope. Okay. All right. So. You get her in the car and uh, put her in the back seat? Yes. Okay, and she laying across the, the back seat? Yes. And I assume her head is down by where the piece that was cut out was? Yes, sir. All right. Um, what about those other items, uh, you know, the bird I... stuff uh, and the other items that were in the car, were those there? Before you laid her down, or was that something you placed in later? And it was in the car already. Um, that's the question. In, that's in that area of the car? You know what I'm well, talking about? I, I, I ended up moving, yeah. They were there in the back seat, and I just ended up pushing them off onto the floor. Yeah, like this, in here we see this, these, these feathers or whatever. This stuff was already already here in the car? Yeah, it was already in the car, yeah. I didn't, yeah. I didn't put nothing in the car besides her. That's it. Okay. Um... So, uh, where do you go with her from uh, Magnolia Avenue, from 208? I thought of a, a place to put her, so okay. that's where I, I took her to the place where I buried her. Okay. Now, just by reference, uh, this is where I'm showing you a photo, an aerial photo. This is um, uh, your apartment here. And then this is where Deputy Stewart ticketed the car at 5 a.m. the next morning. And this was where the purse was found eventually. Is the area you took her anywhere on this photograph? 
Was it in this area or was it some other it's area? in that area. Okay. All right. Um, what, which road is it down, Bill? Is not it down, down road. It's, it's, I don't know what the name of the road is. I don't Let, know which road. I don't know the name of it. Well, let's talk about the route you took. Did you go down? Did you go across Gulf, uh, down Magnolia Avenue, or did you take a different road? No, I went, made a left out of the, right out of the driveway, came here, made a left, went down to where the uh, the road that I desired, mm -hmm. and took it down that. And Is it going to be one of these, some road in between these two spots? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you, do you have any idea, looking at the area, which road it was? So here you here's Magnolia, and you come here, and you could take a right here, or you could take a right here, or you could take a right here, or, you could, or you could go down to the road where that that. Oh uh, no 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 no! It ain't even in there. It's not in there. It's further up. Further, okay. Further up. Further towards, up. Towards the tip of the violin. All right. Here's a here's a larger. Okay. Depiction. Yeah, I don't know if this will help you, Mr. Cumber, but... Um, well, I got, I got Google Maps up, but that's more... Let's see. see. It's hard for me to identify where Magnolia yeah. Avenue is on this. Do you guys, you guys have is, it on this here? This is Pine, and then I think is Magnolia the next one down? I know I know Magnolia is, like, pretty close to Pine. You know Pine is the main road here, and then, like, it comes down here to the sandbar. Is that a better... Do you zoom in for you, okay, Mr. Um, well, I can, if you want the road, I can give you the road, but I, I can tell you exactly where yeah, it is. But what, what's the name I of the road? I don't know the name of the road. I just oh, okay. know it's 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 the road right next to um uh, eighty. It's eighty. It's the same road. Like here's Haley's Motel. You know where Haley's Motel is? Yes, sir. It's further to the south. Right? Yeah, it's further to the south. Yep. All right. Right, that road right there. I took her all the way down at the end of that road, right next to the motel. That's where she's laying. You talking about the roads next to Halo's Hayley's motel, not her? Or are you, are you saying she's, that she's the, no? She's down at the end of that road. Okay, all right. Um, when you like, uh, how? Did you get out to the actual beach area or what? Like, was there like some some overgrowth or, or what? Where where you went to? It's sandy. Sandy. Okay. And it, is it near like a you know some of those uh, some of these areas have like walkways out to the to the beach? Is it near any of those? From my understanding, I was, I'm supposed to be taking you guys out there today. So right, right. Okay. I just I just want to get a general idea. Um, just using this as kind of a reference, is it going to be like in grassy, full, or is it going to be like in foliage, or is it going to be like... It's going to be in, no, it's in uh, sandy. Sandy, yeah. okay. All right. Did you bring a shovel with you? Yes. Okay. And uh, was that something you guys had at the apartment, or did you have to get it somewhere? I got it from Haley's Motel. Okay. And... Uh, did you know where it was from the brief time you'd worked for him, for Haley's, or how did you know where to go for a shovel? I knew that he had utensils. I knew kind of like the general area where he had them, because I did work for him in the past. Now, what made you choose that particular spot? You know, I, I really don't know. I just, it was just seemed like the, the most unexpected spot. Okay. Um, and did you have any reason to believe that, that there wouldn't be people around that spot as opposed to, say, there's a closer been, spot like here? There's probably been people in that spot. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a spot where you would visit. All right. Uh, are there houses? Uh, obviously, we're going to go down there, but are, were there houses in the area where you dug? Well, yeah. Yeah, kind of. Okay. Let's keep let's keep in mind that this is seven years ago, so um, I don't know what the area looks like today as opposed to what it looked like in two thousand and eight. Uh, understood. At, at that time, though, right? Um, there was in, in a roundabout way there was houses in around it. Okay. Not I'm, around it. You know what I mean? I'm just wondering. I mean, we're talking about roughly midnight. You're going out there. It's a possibility anybody could be walking up and down the beach or whatever. Any reason you chose that particular area where you thought 
I they're, I'm was, less likely to be observed here than somewhere else. I could have been observed taking the body out of the car. Okay. From where I decided to put her, there was a possibility of me being observed taking her body out of the car. Okay. Because there was houses on both sides. Okay. So you didn't... There wasn't a particular reason why you chose this spot over some other spot. I did think it was the most unexpected spot, sir, like okay. I said. All right. Because it was close to I Haley's. I was taking my chances. Because it was close to Haley's. Not because of that. Because it's just... When you see the area, you'll understand. Okay. All right. Had you walked in that area with Sabine or had spent time in that area? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so about how far down would you say you dug? It's approximately... When I stood in it, it was up to about my waist. Okay. So maybe three feet, three, four um, feet? Probably four feet. Okay. Um, and the area in you where you dug, it was surrounded by sand? It was surrounded by grass. The area is sandy, but it's surrounded by grass. Okay. Do you see anybody on the beach or walking up and down the streets when you're doing all this? No. Okay. How long would you say it took you to, um, to to do to dig the hole and get her in? Uh, shoot, man, I don't know. Probably about twenty minutes. Okay. I dug the hole first, and then I went back up to the car and and got her. Okay. Um, any reason why you didn't get rid of the purse in that same location? You know, I don't know. Mm-hmm. The purse was in the car with you, though, at that point, right? No. Oh, it wasn't? Oh, okay. No, I never... No. So you'd just taken the keys out of the purse to drive the car, but you'd left the purse at the apartment? Correct. Okay. Um, and so you buried her, you covered her up, and do you go straight back to the apartment? Well, I take the car back to the spot where it was sighted. Okay, and so back, to, back, to, back to that area of Magnolia Avenue, okay, and then yeah. you just walked home from there? And I walked home from there. Okay. Um, and then when do you get rid of the purse? Well, I really can't recall. It wasn't that night. It wasn't that night? No, it wasn't that night. Mm-hmm. I don't, uh, it wasn't that night. No. Okay. Um, it was during the daytime, so I know it wasn't that, that night. Okay. Can't recall which day, but it wasn't. But you just like threw it into the, the I foliage? I walked it or back walked, there. Walked back there? Yeah. Uh, see anybody while you're while you're doing that? Made sure nobody was watching. What time of day roughly do you think it was? Morning, afternoon, early afternoon. evening? Afternoon. Afternoon? Yeah. And, okay, so you, you dropped the car off at the end of Magnolia Avenue, close to the beach... Um, and what do you do back at the apartment? Do you do any kind of cleaning up or uh, uh, take a shower or anything like that? Well, I think I observed uh, that's when I possibly observed the uh, the discolorization on the arm of the chair or arm of the couch. Okay. I clean that up. And you try to wash that with soap and water, you said? Yeah. Yeah. When is it that you get into the car and you drive it into town? On the... Uh, fifth, sometime around right before the the last bus runs out there. Okay. Um, I don't know. That's probably around two, three o'clock in the afternoon. In the afternoon. Okay. So, um, did you use the car any time in between dropping it, parking it there, and then driving it into town two, three p.m.? No, sir. Okay. Um. And. Did you have to take the Cortez Bridge because the Manatee Bridge was closed? I took Cortez. All right. Why did you pick the Gator Lounge? Any particular reason? Had you ever been a customer there or anything? Um, I mean, there were obviously closer places to, Cor- to where Cortez hits 14th Street that you could have you could have gone. It, it's just a bar that I knew was uh, busy and not... No. I don't know. It's just a bar I knew was busy, and I don't think you know. I could just be a you know a customer parking a car. Okay. And uh, you left the keys in the ignition and the top down. No, I didn't leave the top down. Okay, left the keys in the ignition. Left the keys, and it was yes. I left the keys in the ignition, the top up. And were you hoping somebody would take it? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, now, you have previously given a clothing description of her that night that she was wearing a flowered shirt, Converse sneakers, and blue jeans. Is correct. that is that an accurate description? That's correct. Okay. And so that's what should be on her when we find her? That's correct. Okay. I'm sorry, it was a flowered shirt? Flowered shirt, Converse sneakers, and blue jeans. Um, How would you get back to the island after dropping the car off at the I gate lounge? The bus, you catch a bus at the courthouse. Okay. So I had to get there before I think the last one runs at five o'clock or something like that, and I had to get there and, and get back to the island. Now, uh, is that why you chose the the lounge because it was close to that bus stop? Um, like I said, it's just the bar I frequented, and it was just okay. something that stuck in my head, and you, you know, it just it's an innocent looking spot, you know. Okay. I don't know how much pro- I mean, problems they got there, but it's just uh, I just thought it was an, uh, a decent place to put it. Okay. Uh, and what time would you say you got back to the island uh, that day on the 5th? Like dinner time? Oh, well, yeah, I didn't go straight back to the apartment mm-hmm. when they dropped me on the bus because the bus goes down to um, Coquina okay. and drops off first and doesn't run up, but I, I think I got off of Coquina. And then how did you get back to your apartment? Did you walk? Uh, or trolley. Trolley, okay. Gentlemen, questions? Did you bury anything else with her other than her body? No. So we shouldn't expect to find bottles or knives or anything no. like that? No. I think you had mentioned a chain or something you had given her or made for her. That should still be on her. That should be on her? Okay. Um What kind of chain is it? Um, it's a um, link, a silver link chain. Kind of big. Okay. Kind of big chain. Did you take anything out of the purse before you threw it into the foliage? Is there any loose money, cash, or anything in it? No. Okay. The only thing I took out was her phone. Okay, what would you do with that? I stashed it at the apartment for a little while up under uh, the next-door neighbor's uh, air conditioner. Okay. And then... When uh, I decided it was time to get rid of that, I took it to the spot where we sighted, where the car got sighted, buried it by the little bench that's sitting there, and then I realized that that wasn't going to work. So I took it and took it down to uh, to Bradenton Beach, took the chip out, flushed it down the toilet, and then threw the uh, phone in the car or in the trash. From that point on, of course, I don't have no one. Right. Okay. Was there anything else of hers that you needed to dispose of uh, that was remaining in the apartment? Other than a purse, no. And the phone. Okay. Gentlemen? There was nobody else involved. It was just you? Just me. So nobody helped you move her to the car and then to the hole? Nobody. Okay. I'm set. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, We're going to... Are you going to go with us? Yes. Are you going to ride with us, I assume, or however you all want to do it? Okay. I have like a 30-second hearing. I've got to go do it 10-15. I've got a car with some of my detectives in it. We'll just put you in the back of an unmarked Crown Victoria, and you'll ride out there with them. I'll tell them where we're going. Okay. Does that sound acceptable to you? Yeah, there's a... I want to tell you something beforehand. Yes, sir. When I said that she was getting tired of the situation, mm-hmm. because it wasn't just the smoking, it was the, the controlling issues that Tom was having on us, and I was very, very kind of like, I didn't like that, I wasn't digging that, and she she would, you know, side with him, I don't understand, but she would side with him, and I'd kind of get all funny about it, you know, and that was part of another issue that it, we, we just, it was getting to the point where we was going to go to counseling. Mm-hmm. But it was getting to the point where we decided probably that it wasn't going to be working out. And I think we were just pushing it to the limit as far as we can get it with each other. And Let me ask you this, Mr. Cumber. It, I think one, somebody said that uh, Sabine might have been carrying on other relationships at this, during the same period she was, had a relationship with you. Is, was that true? I have no idea, but she's very... I'm not going to say she was, okay. but it was... Uh, it just came. It, it, I wasn't. The only, to be honest with you, the only person I thought that she might have been having something going on with was her massage or masseuse. Rick Johns. Yeah, because uh, you know who that is. is. That his name? 
Uh, I couldn't believe that's his name. Physical yeah. fitness guy? Yeah. No, 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 no. No. Not right. him. The guy who does the massages, Greg. Oh, okay. Whatever his name is. But that's the only person who I thought that she might have been having something going on with. There was, I think it may, might have been Teresa Slack. I can't remember. Somebody who attributed to you some concerns that she was involved with other people. Is that Was that true? Was that an issue between the two of you that Not you thought she issue. was carrying on with other people, that any issue women or men? Up. It was just suspicion on my behalf. Mm-hmm. Okay. But I didn't, it was just suspicion. I never voiced that to her. Okay. No, it was just suspicion. Because right. something, something strange happened one time during when we was getting a masseuse, when we were getting our, our back massage, and something strange happened. I turned around and happened to catch it a little bit. And she did she never it seemed like she didn't mind it you know what was going on he the masseuse was touching her in some area of her body that he was looking at some part of her body he shouldn't have been looking at okay and that was about how long before november 4th that was probably about two weeks two weeks before okay had you guys did you guys ever discuss that argue about it it, it seemed no it seemed that um it the the two weeks prior to this mm-hmm. that the Wednesdays and stuff when she got her back massages mm-hmm. she made sure she was at the um, the house on seventy second or the other house okay her and Tom's house gotcha okay I'm not saying that it was or anything like that it was just a suspicion that didn't that wasn't part of the situation that roused what happened mm-hmm. it was just a, a, an accumulation of things let me just ask you. Uh, when we go out to the location you're going to take us to, did you mark the area in any way no just in case to. you wanted to find it or anything? No need to. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions, gentlemen? Nope. I just wanted to highlight on that a little bit more because I didn't want to seem, seem like that it was all with the smoke and it was, it was, she was a controlling it. She was controlling and stuff. Hey, Bill, was she a religious person at all? I'm trying to remember what the religion the, and, and God bless her. She uh, she was, I don't know if she was converting with it within herself, but she had wrote a play about um, a, 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 a little girl whose father died, and the father was coming back, and she was, the little girl would see the father, but nobody would believe her, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, that play, I had gotten asked for to give it over to somebody, Debbie, some uh, woman named Debbie, so she could take it to the Manatee Players and make a play out of it. It was very. It was. It was a good. It was, she wrote a good one. It was a good one. There was but, a wooden cross put up on a tree by Golf Boulevard where you guys used to sit. We were told. Did you put that there? No. 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 It was probably uh, something in the morning. All right. Any other questions, John? Nope. All right. Uh, anything else? Anything you want to put on the record, Mr. Roberts? Uh, no. All right, we're going to conclude the interview. The time is ten oh nine.